When we design computers, the clock speed is an important part of the specification. We usually need a clock to make our designs work. So the clock speed or clock frequency is usually defined in hertz or cycles per second. The clock cycle or the clock period is the inverse of that and measured in seconds per cycle. The relationship between the two is that of inverse. So let's do some examples to see how to convert between frequency and clock cycle and back and forth. So let's just take this example. Suppose the clock period is 2 nanoseconds what is the frequency? So frequency equals 1 over tau, the symbol that we're using for the clock period, which is 1 over 2 nanoseconds. So let's express nanoseconds in terms of just seconds. So that's 2 times 10 to the minus 9 seconds. So at this point, we want to simplify this fraction such that the denominator only has a 1. Um, so there are several ways to do this. One possible way is to multiply the top and bottom by 1 half and multiply the top and bottom by 10 to the 9. So what that does is that this will reduce to a 1. The 1 half on the top will give us a 0 0.5 and this will reduce to a 1 leaving us with 10 to the 9 on top. So as an aside here we have used the law of exponents that says that x to the a times x to the b equals x to the oops x to the a plus b. So ten to the minus nine times ten to the nine equals ten to the minus nine plus nine gives you ten to the zero gives you one. Okay, so now we have point five times ten to the nine. Our units um, are now in cycles per second. So let's rewrite this point 5 as 5 times 10 to the minus 1 times 10 to the 9 cycles per second. So how do we get that? Well, note that 0 0.5 is the same as 5 over 10, which is the same as 5 times 10 to the minus 1, oops, or 1 over 2. So these are all equivalent ways of representing your 0.5. So now that we have that we can use the law of exponents again to get 10 to the 8 from here. So let's expand this out. That's 5 with 8 zeros at the end. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's put our commas in. Okay. So notice here that these 6 zeros, 10 to the 6, is mega. And so we have 500 times 10 to the 6 cycles per second or 500 mega hertz. And this is the final answer which I will underline and put two strokes here. As a general practice you should always indicate what your final answer is with a box or some sort of
line underneath. Let's do another example. Suppose tau equals 10 nanoseconds. What is the frequency? So frequency equals 1 over 10 nanoseconds, which is equal to 1 over 10 times 10 to the minus 9 seconds. So using the law of exponents, I'm going to simplify this to be 10 to the minus 8 seconds down on the denominator. So by multiplying the top and bottom by 10 to the 8, we have 10 to the 8 cycles per second. If you expand this, you will have 1 with followed by 8 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay? So as you can see here, we have our 10 to the 6, which is mega. So we have 100 mega hertz. And again, this is our answer. Let's do one more example. Suppose tau equals 50 microseconds. So in this case, our frequency equals 1 over 50. Now micro is 10 to the minus 6 seconds. Okay, so that's micro. So let's rewrite our denominator as 5 times 10 to the 1 times 10 to the minus 6 seconds, which gives us 1 over 5 times 10 to the minus 5 seconds, which we can rewrite as follows. So I'm going to put my units here. So 1 over 5 is 0 0.2 and 1 over 10 to the minus 5 is 10 to the 5. Cycles per second is hertz. So let's rewrite this as 2 times 10 to the minus 1 times 10 to the 5 hertz. So how do we get that? Well, zero point two is the same as 2 over 10, which is 2 times 10 to the minus 1. Okay. So using the law of exponents again, we're going to join these two powers of 10 together to get 10 to the 4th, expand it out, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 zeros. Notice that this is kilo, 10 to the 3, so we have 20 kilo hertz. Notice that in this step, of simplifying our fraction, we have used the property that when you multiply two fractions, you multiply the numerator and the denominators together. Okay. So let's look at the case where